we're going to pick up where we left off with the Code Crafters shell challenge in Zig. Uh, so I actually started this one before I knew Zig. It was my first real Zig project. Um, I'm still learning Zig, but I'd say I've got the fundamentals and maybe a little bit more down at this point. So I want to come back and continue this one. And I remember that this one, this part of the challenge kind of stumped me for a little bit. So uh, I'm hoping that it won't stump me going forward with this now. So I'm going to pull up Code Crafters here, and I still have the Build Your Own Redis one open. Okay, so here's where we left off. So this is the type built-in uh, executable files. So in this stage, you'll extend the type built-in to search for executable files using path. Path is an environment variable that specifies a set of directories where programs are located. So in the, in the last video, we did the type built-in for built-ins. Uh, so if you said echo, it would tell you that it's a shell built-in. If you said exit, it would tell you that it's a shell built-in. If you said type, it would tell you that it's a shell built-in. Now we actually want to look up and tell you if something is available via your path. And if so, we want to tell you where the path is. So this actually seemed like a challenging thing for me when I first started this, but at this point, I think it should be rather straightforward. So I haven't looked at this code much since uh, doing the Redis Code Crafters challenge in Zig and then building an HTTP, several HTTP servers in Zig and a couple other things. So uh, let's take a look at this and see where we left off. So we have this uh, standard library we're creating. We have a main method. We have a standard in, standard out. Looks good. We have a while loop that does some printing of the shell dollar sign. We check to see if you have entered a command. If so, and it's exit, we handle exit. Otherwise, we handle echo. Otherwise, we handle type. Okay. So I think all we need to do is modify our existing type function here. Uh, so we have a couple different things that we need to do. So the very first thing is we need to essentially get a handle on an allocator. Um, we don't have one available yet, so I'm just going to get a reference to one here. We should probably pull this out at some point, but we'll grab a general purpose allocator like so. And then we need to actually get the allocator allocator on that general purpose allocator. So we could do something like this. Oh, this already feels gross. So let's pull that out. I don't like having that in the handle type function. We should probably have that up here in the main. So we'll paste it in the main like so. We have access to our allocator. We're going to modify the method signature here to take in an allocator. Come back to our handle type. And then our first argument will be an allocator. It'll be a standard mem allocator. Looking good. Feeling good about that. Okay. Not defining our allocator and our handle type. That's a bad idea. I've felt dirty even starting that approach. Um, one more thing before I forget. Come up here, defer uh, gpa.dinit. Okay. Great. So now that we're here, uh, we essentially need to get some environment variables. So one of the easy ways to do this is we can create a ooh, uh, like an env map. It is it is an environment map. Um, and in fact, we have a method to do that. So we have uh, standard process dot get env map. Like so. And we need to give it an allocator. Imagine that. Okay, so we get access to that. Uh, we can defer env.deinitialize in our case. And then uh, one thing I'm actually not sure about is if we need to go in and deinitialize all the keys and values that are collected in the env map or not. That might be something we need to do a little bit of research on. Um, either way, what we can do now is specifically get the path. So this will be env.get, and we give it a key, so it'll be path. And this is an optional, so it could return null. So we'll need to handle that, and we'll get to that in a second. Uh, now we need to figure out what folders are available in our path. So I've got var folders, standard mem, split scalar. Uh, this needs a comp time type. So the type is going to be a U8, and the buffer is going to be path or else an empty string. Seems like a way to handle that. 
And then the delimiter is going to be a uh, colon. And if you're unfamiliar with the way that path works, it's a path is a collection of paths that are colon separated to indicate that, hey, this is a path and this is a path. So we'll split on the colon and then what we're splitting on will give us all the paths that we need to support. Uh, so with that in mind, uh, I don't need another variable. What I actually need to do is, um, the reason we're making folders a variable is it gives us an iterator and we want to throw that into a while loop. So we'll do something like folders.next and uh, we can capture the folder here because we want the folder. We want that in scope because we're going to use it here. Uh, so I'm going to create a directory. So this directory is going to be standard fs current working directory dot open dir folder. And I actually don't know if there's a better way to do this. It feels a little weird um, saying, hey, give me the current directory and then open another directory from it. There might be a better way to do that. But uh, we want to open that directory. We're going to set iterate to true. And then we're going to catch, if we catch an error, that means that we can't open the path that was uh, collected. So if we can't open it, then we just want to continue on to the next path. We consider that a bad path. It's totally fine. There's, there's not like in your path variable, there's no validation that the things in your path make sense. So you could have a nonsense directory or a directory that maybe used to exist, but no longer does exist, all sorts of things. So in our case, we'll just continue. Um, we'll move on to the next one. And then really what this, this uh, is doing is we're trying to find the path that the argument passed into handle type exists in. So that will be a file. It'll be a file in a folder and that will have a path. So we want to continue. And if we hit the end of the loop when there's nothing left, then we know that it's not found. So we can continue what we're doing here. We're uh, going to want to close that directory. And then what we can do is create a walker. So if I say var walker is equal to try dir walk, then we give this an allocator. We can defer walker.dinit. And then now we can iterate through all of the items that are in that directory by using this walker. So we have an entry here. Oops. And that entry has some things like base name. It has access to um, uh, a couple. Well, let's, let's just see. So we have entry, we have base name, we have path, we have directory, we have kind. Uh, so all we really want to do here is just do some conditional logic and check. So we can do if standard mem equal u8, because that's the type we're working with, entry.base name. And then we can compare that to args because args is what we pass in. We probably should change that name at some point too. That's not a very good name. Uh, return try writer dot print. Something like uh, s is um, s is s. Actually, I don't think it's going to be that simple. I think we'll have to do s is s slash s given what we have uh, and there might be a cleaner way to do this too i think in fact there's a way to do the formatting with numbers zig format numbers formatting specifiers let's try this out uh let's see i think we want advanced formatting position specifier 0s, 0s, 1s. I'm curious if you have to use... Yeah, that's fine. So this will be 0s, this will be 0s, and this will be 1s. We'll give that a shot. And then what we can do is we can pass in entry.baseName and folder, like so. And I think that should be it. Oh. Let's see, we have a missing semicolon here. Um, yeah, I, I feel pretty good about this. Let's, uh, let's uh, give this a shot. And what we can do is run CodeCrafters uh, test. 
And this will bundle up our Zig program, send it over to Code Crafters. Actually, it, it uh, I think it creates a branch behind the scenes, and then commits to that branch and bundles that up and pushes it to Code Crafters. Code Crafters gets that via a hook, gets a turbo test run in our case, and it starts to build our application. Uh, we actually have an error with our application, so let's fix that. So we can see on main zig, we have on uh, line number nine, all non-void values must be used. Oh, I think this is just allocator. Let's go to line nine. Yeah, sure. There we go. Give that another shot. So we'll give Code Crafters test another run. And we'll see how this turns out. So this takes a second. Um, a couple, depending on what you're using in Code Crafters, this might be slower or faster. Uh, for better or worse, Zig is very, very fast. But when we ship over to Code Crafters, we have to, um, they spin up images through Docker and, or, or maybe Docker, maybe some other tool. But they have some images that they have to spin up and then it has to compile our program. Uh, does not match the expected value. That is more or less correct. It is, it is basically doing what we would expect it to do. I think the issue is that I just forgot a new line on, um, in handle type. So somewhere down here. Yep. Right here. So let's add a new line there and try it again. I think this should pass this time. I feel, feel pretty confident about it now. Uh, interesting. So our new, our new test actually passed. Our old one failed. Uh, do I have a typo? Something going on here? It says is a shell is a built in command. Okay. So I've got this issue or this, this print on 39 and it says that echo is a built in command, but I think it's supposed to say echo is a shell built in. I don't know if the challenge changed. Uh, since I did this originally, or maybe I have some issue with my code or something, something of that nature. Not entirely sure, um, but we'll go ahead and fix that and then we'll give it another shot. So let's run Code Crafters test again. Oh, this is a super interesting predicament. So Echo, in this case, is both a shell built-in, and then there's also an echo command in the uh, bin folder. So I think the issue here is that we are trying this, but we're not actually returning the value. So in this case, if it is a built-in, it's a built-in. We don't need to tell you that it's in your path as well. Uh, so we can just return on the try of us writing that. And that will short circuit the path lookup stuff that we just added. So we'll run our test again. Okay, all of our tests actually passed this time. That's great. So I am going to git add. Uh, I'm going to git commit. Um, get things working for reals. Uh, you probably should come up with a better commit message. As always, um, do, do as I say, not as I do. Uh, we'll push this. Okay. Uh, push, force, and also you probably shouldn't force push, but I think I've got some weird uh, state between my Code Crafters repo and my local repo, and my local is the source of truth, so I'm just going to force push. Uh, when you submit things, either via Code Crafters submit or via Git, like I'm doing, it will run the test again just to make sure that everything works, and in our case, it does, so we can open the shell challenge and mark this stage as complete. In the next stage, we're going to run a program. Uh, so we'll actually execute things. Uh, they'll be located in the path, so we'll probably refactor some of the code that we just wrote. And actually, it might be a good opportunity to refactor the entire program now that we're a little more comfortable with Zig. So look forward for that in the next video sometime soon. Thanks, and if you found this useful, don't forget you can subscribe to the channel to be notified of new videos. Uh, I think you also have to ring a bell or something. Uh, YouTube still it's still new to me. But um, yeah, if you uh, check the bell or click the bell, whatever it is, you'll be notified of every video that I put out, which means you won't miss any of these, which is great because if you miss several and then you come and find one and we pick up where we left off every single time, you've missed several of the videos and you have to go back and watch them and no one wants to do that all in one setting. So subscribe to the channel, click the bell, 
and let me know what your thoughts are. I would love to hear how this is going for you, whether you're doing this in Zig or whether you're doing a different challenge in Zig, or maybe you're not doing Zig at all. Maybe you're using Go, like my first time doing the shell challenge. So uh, yeah, I'd love to hear about it. Let me know in the comments right below. Thanks and have a great day.